Alleluia, alleluia. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Alleluia, alleluia. Loving Father, grant each of us the true knowledge that love, the love of God, is stronger than death. I want to talk about how amazing the Holy Bible is. And there is a hatred of God's word today in America. But first of all, let me tell you how amazing this book is. Think about the word Bible, B-I-B-L-E, basic instruction before leaving earth. The Bible in Greek is actually means biblios. In Greek, it means a library of books. I would consider the Bible a weapon of mass instruction. St. Jerome called the Bible, he called it the bulwark of the church. A man who is grounded in the testimony of the scriptures is the bulwark of the church. St. Jerome, church father. Bulwark means protection or defense. When we pray to God, uh, when we pray, we speak to God. But when we read the Bible, God speaks to us. The Bible is an ancient collection of writings. It's got two parts, Old Testament, 46 books, New Testament, 27 books. The Catholic Church says that the most important books of the Bible are the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, because it gives us uh, the bird's eye view from four eyewitnesses of who the Lord Jesus Christ was, the Son of God. St. Teresa of Avila, the little flower, uh, I mean, St. Teresa of Avila, doctor of the church, Carmelite, she says, quote, all the troubles of the church, all the evils in the world flow from this source that men do not by clear and sound understanding and serious consideration penetrate into the truths of sacred scripture. Wow. Doctor of the church, all the problems of the world could be fixed if we would all penetrate into the Bible and all the problems of the church would be fixed. If we would all penetrate into the truths of God's word. That's what St. Teresa of Avila says. Second Timothy three sixteen. all scripture is inspired by God. That means God breathe. That's what that means. And profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness that the man of God may be complete equipped for every good's word. For every good work, excuse me, uh, St. Augustine said that the Bible is God the Father's love letter to us. Did you catch that? The Bible is God's love letter to us. The Bible was collected, put together by, uh, and codified by the Catholic Church back at the Council of uh, the Council of Rome back in 382 AD under the orders of Pope Damasus I, where all the books of the Bible, 73 in total, were collected and they were put together in final form in, at the Council of Rome in 382 AD. Then the Catholic Church approved these uh, the Old Testament, the 46 books, the New Testament, the 27 books at the Council of Hippo in North Africa and again at the Council of Carthage in 397 AD. How do we know that the Bible is true? St. Augustine says, I would not believe the Gospels unless for the authority of the Catholic Church uh, told me so. So we believe in the authority of the Church. The Church has determined and told us which books are inspired by God. The Bible, the Holy Spirit is the primary author of the Bible. We know that. But it was over 40 different people, mostly Hebrews, some unknown. They wrote the sacred scriptures. And most of the Bible was written in the Holy Land, uh, the land that we would call Israel. But the Bible was also written in places in Babylon, Egypt, Rome, Corinth, Ephesus, and some other places as well. The Bible was written within a span of about uh, 1,500 years from about 1400 BC to about 100 AD. That's when the Bible was written, the the, the 73 books. Uh, I don't know if you realize that the Bible is the best-selling book of all time. The, the Bible is the best-selling book of all time, according to Guinea's Book of World Records. The Bible outsells every other book every single year, ever since the invention of the printing press. Even Martin Luther, the first Protestant, the, the first Protestant heretic, uh, the first Protestant reformer, he said this, After leaving the Catholic Church, he acknowledged that the Bible came from the Catholic Church. He said this, quote, We are obliged to yield many things to those Catholics that they possess the word of God, which we received from them. Otherwise, we Lutherans should have known nothing at all about God's word. And so you have the first Protestant reformer or deformer or distorter acknowledging that the Bible was given to the Protestants by the Catholics. 
Again, the four gospels occupy the central place because Jesus is the center. And uh, <clears throat> the church teaches that the Bible is full. It, 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 the Bible is God's word and it's fully without error. It's fully without error. The Catholic church teaches that the Holy Bible firmly, faithfully, and without error teaches that truth, which God, for the sake of our salvation, wished to see confided to the sacred scriptures. Vatican II teaches that the Holy Bible is the very sacred soul, the very soul of sacred theology. The Bible is the very soul of sacred theology. And uh, Pope Benedict XVI, he also says that the normative theologians are the authors of Holy Scripture. The normative theologians of the Catholic Church are the authors of Scripture. Presidents, I'm going to quote to you many presidents and what they said about the Bible on the next segment. But I'll tell you why the Bible is in many ways, the Bible was the first book. I mean, literally, because as far as our Western culture is concerned, there was only one book. And for a while, literally, there was only one book. And that was the Bible that was printed in 1439 by a Catholic, Johann Gutenberg, when he invented the printing press. And that book, the Bible, was the very first book, book that was ever printed and published when the printing press was invented in 1439. Before that, the, the Bible was in scrolls and writings on papyrus. We started, we were starting to aggregate written texts together and they went through all sorts of technological transformations. But then the Bible from papyrus and from scrolls, it became a book that everyone could buy. And, uh, and it became literally the first, the first book that was published that everyone could now purchase. But of all those Western books, of all of those great Western books that have emerged, they've emerged from that underlying book, the Bible. That book itself, the Bible isn't a book. Like I told you, it's a library of books. It's a collection of books. But, but I can tell you this, that when you look at all the, the corpuses, all the writings that have been out there, the the, all the ideas that we have in Western civilization, some words are dependent on other words and some ideas are dependent on other ideas. The more ideas are dependent on a given idea, the more fundamental that idea becomes. That's the definition of fundamental. So now imagine that you have an aggregation of text in a civilization. So you ask, which are the fundamental texts? And the answer is the text upon which other texts depend on. And so you'd get like you. And so you'd put Shakespeare in English because so many texts are dependent on Shakespeare and his literary revelations. You also have Milton uh, with his paradise lost. It would also be in that category. How about Dante's Inferno? That would be, it would also be in that category. What about Geoffrey Chaucer, author of the Canterbury tales? What about Niccolo Machiavelli? the author of The Prince. What about T.S. Eliot, C.S. Lewis, J.R.R. Tolkien? These are fundamental authors of Western civilization. They're part of the Western canon. And not because of the arbitrary dictates of power, but because the text of these men influenced other texts. And so when you think about that as a hierarchy, the Bible is at its base. <clears throat> this is certainly the case. Now imagine that the entire corpus of Western linguistic production, think about that. Now you can understand that and, and, and you sample it by reading it and listening to stories and listening to people talk. And so you sample that whole domain and you build a low resolution representation of that inside of you. Then you listen and see through that lens. The Bible is the precondition for the manifestation of truth because all the great works in Western civilization, Shakespeare, Milton, Dante, Chaucer, Machiavelli, Eliot, Lewis, Tolkien, all the great works of Western civilization, all of them, 
have been borrowed from this corpus. The precondition for all Western civilization is the Holy Bible, which makes the Holy Bible more true than anything else. That's the foundation of all Western civilization, of of all Western thought. Even our Constitution, our Declaration of Independence, our Pledge of Allegiance, and our great national hymns are all a manifestation of what's taught in the Bible. The knowledge of God by reason, the knowledge of the Ten Commandments, the knowledge of the Golden Rule, these truths that are stamped into the Catholic DNA. Why? Because of the Holy Bible. This is why we say Catholics should have a biblical worldview and not a secular worldview. What we commonly refer to what's going on in America as a culture war, it's fundamentally, it's a conflict between those of us that have a biblical worldview and those of us that have a secular humanist worldview. Of all the books that have been written, the Bible is a weapon of mass instruction. The Bible has been known to cause, reading the Bible has been known to cause radical positive, life-changing alteration. Any other book that you read has good information. Some of it, some, some not so much. All of the books are books of information, but the Holy Bible is a book of transformation. And the Holy Bible, it, it's a, it's a, it gives a special revelation about God so that we can know God and love God and serve God in this lifetime and spend all eternity with him in the next. Because in the Bible, God reveal, reveals his will to us by more direct communication. God tells us something about his nature and what we must do to attain the destiny that he's planned for us called heaven. The Holy Bible, to me, I look at it, it's like, it's like a window in this prison world of ours through which we may look into eternity. And no man, get this, no man is uneducated who knows the Bible and no one is wise who is ignorant of its teachings. The Bible is truth for all of us. And the Bible is not just true for you. It's true for all of us. Bible, basic instruction before leaving earth. Remember that there's going to be an exit interview. There's going to be final exams. Are you ready? Wake up, America. Wake up. Reading the Bible is a way to listen to God every day. And you'll be amazed at how many times the daily mass readings will relate perfectly to something going on in your life.